G'day mate, how you going? Welcome back to the Green and Gold Life. Wowee, what a cracking day mate. Eh? It's gonna be about those mid-20s. It's about a three or four gold breeze going on, nothing too hectic, but uh, just an absolute cracking day. So it is Father's Day today. And uh, luckily for me, it's an absolute cracking day. So I thought, might as well get out on the yard, man. <laughs> and as you can see, it needs a little bit of TLC. So I thought I'd give you just a holistic update on how, um, on how both turf varieties are going at the moment, the propagation project as well. And uh, the aim is as well today is to get out our celebrant GR and uh, a pre-emergent herbicide. So I may be a little bit late with my um, pre-emergent because it sort of snuck up on me, man, this weather. So um, when I think back to last year, <clears throat> I don't even think I got my Renault done till November. And it is now like early September. So we're two months ahead of time, which means hopefully we get a six or an eight month growing season, man. Oh <laughs> boy, look out. So uh, yeah, let's jump down and have a look, eh? The first spot we're gonna take a look at is where we stash the trampoline over winter time. So here we might be able to see, oh, the grass is 300. 350 tall, where it's just been able to, to keep growing. Because essentially, uh, it's a, a lesson learned from our tank uh, tank installation series was, I stuffed my rainwater tank just up here last year. And because the sun was sitting lower in the sky, it was still getting light. However, because the trampoline is like a dark shade cloth, it retained heat. Um, and yeah, it just kept the soil temperatures up enough to keep a little bit of growth into it. So. I targeted this area here because this was the worst spot in terms of recovery for, uh, through Project Sacre Bleu. <laughs> and we'll get back, into, uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But um, yeah, it was mostly leggy because uh, because I was unable to really mow it. So um, yeah, but it just goes to show, you know, if you can bump your soil temps up and keep them up, you know, she's just going to keep growing for you. So I'm really happy with this at this stage. Let's uh, have a look out on the deck. We can see Project Sacre Bleu has almost finished filling in over winter time. So that uh, the addition of the black uh, organic loam that I'd purchased to backfill the trench or top it up with, did a, did a ripping job, man. Just absorbed the heat from the sun. And we can see we've got some leggy growth right by the trench, but uh, nothing where the rest of it was. So by exposing that to the sun, we can see a bump in temperatures and then the grass is gonna push into there. So like I said, most of it's covered in. I'd say we're 70, 80% there covered. Uh, hopefully we can we can sort of increase that over the next couple of months before reno and this is yeah like i mentioned before this is where the trampoline was stashed and this is our worst section but um it sort of moved in a bit but it's mostly leggy growth and we can see up through here as well um we've got a lot of coverage as well as our plugs so i took some plugs in the middle of winter and dropped them in there as well or just before winter and they've sort of woken up they haven't moved a lot they've done a little bit but it's better than nothing, man. <laughs> so I've just MacGyvered up myself here a, uh, a greenhouse and it's working a treat, man. I've only had this in two weeks and we can already see plenty of growth underneath it. The Tiff Dwarf, so what I've got in here at the moment is Tiff Dwarf in a lot of these pots. And up the back I've got our Zoysia. So <laughs> the old Zoysia has not budged, mate, eh? <laughs> oh boy. I'm actually starting to sweat to see if I've actually killed it. But uh, there are one or two pots that I've still got green leaf, so I'm not stressing, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's truly testing my patience, man, eh? So, um, <clears throat> got this out here. I dropped it in a spot, again, where I wanted to see some recovery over the trench. And uh, you might not be able to tell, but there's a significant difference where I've, where I've popped this over the last couple of weeks again. You know, the idea was to bump soil temps and, and get that moving. So, um, yeah, I've also got my little greenhouse up by the by the house and that's that's not faring too well man eh? that is uh oh the turf's going all right but <laughs> the old greenhouse is a big catty wampus man so let's duck up there and have a look but uh i'll show you some photos of the turf varieties and how they're looking at the moment i am starting to see some decent gains and i am pretty happy we've got our two pots of tiff dwarf here so we'll notice this one this is sort of what i'd, I'd sort of expect from a sports turf whereby we've got this nice fine leaf um it's tight knit all of that sort of stuff but this over here not sure if it's mutated or whatnot but we can see it's sort of almost sir walter like in in that it's node spacing and it's got a really tough stole on now if we look at this one over here now um this is almost looks like santa anna 
and it may very well be or it's mutated something like that but this is sort of what I'd come to sort of expect for a for a sports turf but I don't have any experience with that kind of gear so I need to ask someone else um, this may have mutated uh, not a hundred percent sure so if we come up here now we can see our zoysia pots so <laughs> oh boy yeah this one's looking rough um, hopefully the rhizomes are all right and we start to see some movement there this is my really good pot so this is the best pot of the lot and um, expecting big thing, big things from this so we're going to keep this in the greenhouse for a lot longer um, I'm not going to transplant this until uh, our soil temperatures are up and boogieing so um, I may even get that out in November December something like that hopefully we've seen a little bit more movement uh, soil temps are up and it'll just roll on and as you can see over here, oh boy, just a barren wasteland, man. My thoughts are that the um, that the stolons are probably, uh, sorry, the rhizomes are probably still okay. And it's just the top growth that sort of died off. So I'm hoping that's the case. We are going to have to shift that today. I'm going to get that up uh, by the house because we need to make an application today, huh? <laughs> Let's go up here and, and have a look up here. So here we can see in the far left pot, we've got some Santa Ana. A uh, big shout out to Luke from Back to the Grind for that one. So we've got some Santa Ana, some Tiff Dwarf, the T31. That one got moving super quick. That one was a good two or three weeks before anything else. Uh, same for the T31. That's what's in here. Look. We've got some T31 in there, which seems to be boogieing. And uh, more Zoysia and whatnot in the greenhouse, which is looking a little bit sick. So we also have more T31 in the old... Um, in the old worm bath there whole bunch of succulents you yeah, boy <laughs> and uh this is more of the uh more of this uh the zoysia in the wheelbarrow here so um if i get the shadow out of the road we can see it's greening up so it's making a move so i haven't killed it well i haven't killed all of it <laughs> so that's what our that's what our propagation project's looking like at the moment um let's jump out the front and see how the uh, tiff stuff's doing eh it's looking a whole lot better now that it's been through winter, eh? Like, I'm not seeing any seed head, which is like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> so what I wanted to do today before I go making any applications was actually take a soil sample. So uh, before you do any soil sampling, you want to make sure you haven't applied fertilizer for a good three or four months. That way, um, that way you're not skewing the results in terms of your NPK, but also your micronutrients as well. Um, so we're going to take that today before we make our Celebrant GR and uh, possibly Oxifert application today. So, um, however, a whole bunch of this is going to get the bomb, like uh, up by the retaining wall on the other side. That is going to be my Zoysia plot. So I was going to do that today, but we got this wind to contend with. So that may have to be another day after work or something like that. So let's, um, let's go and get something so we can take a soil sample, eh? Had a quick chat with uh, Michelle Dickinson. Uh, I got her contact details from uh, Australian Lawn Fanatics. Super smart Sheila man, eh? She got a PhD in all sorts of science stuff to do with the soil, so she knows what she's talking about, man. So um, she said, Dan, on an area like this, go ahead and take six to eight sample uh, soil samples in a zigzag pattern across your lawn. And uh, make sure you do it with something that's PVC or stainless steel. <clears throat> Essentially because uh, your standard uh, iron or whatever can contain uh, sorry, standard steels can contain iron and other trace elements that we want to find in our soil as well. So I've heeded her advice, grabbed a little bit of PVC here because I broke my last one uh, last season. So I've uh, got an ice cream container here and I'm going to go through, take a couple of samples and then we'll post her off to her. So we're about to take our eighth test here and I just wanted to show you the soil profile. So I laid this three years ago, I think. Now if I go about 100 mil. Whoa. Uh -oh. Yeah, here we go. If I go 100 mil, we can see I still got, still got roots at the bottom. 
That's not too bad for winter time, man. I can sort of start to see a little bit of a loam layer there, I reckon. Which is why I might be getting such a high, a high calcium reading. Um, I thought that was at 150. It's about 100. Well, that's alright, the, the, the roots are well into that. And uh, if I... Shouldn't be huffing as puffing as much as I am. <laughs> Get back onto your cardio, son. If I scratch off a bit of that, we can start to see fair income root system there, man. Woo -wee. So we can see there's my sample there. Nice green turf on top. Then we go through a little bit of a thatch layer at the bottom where the crowns are, all that sort of stuff. And it's a little bit sandy there. So that's the uh, play pit sand that we put down last renovation time. Then we move into our stolons. You can see our stolons there, uh, sorry, our rhizomes. And then our root system through there. But take note of the black, um, the black organic loam, man. So that was red before, you know what I mean? So that's, that's all of the organic matter that we've been putting through uh, the Plant Doctor Champion, but also mulch mowing, that sort of thing. Root cycling effect, whereby we grow new roots throughout the year, then they die off, uh, and that keeps circulating to keep uh, replenishing nutrients like carbon and whatnot into the soil profile. So really happy with that. Better take a, better take a bloody sample here. So I wonder whether that, is the issue with my soil is uh, the lack of clay breakdown and that the the um, and that the the low, uh, the gypsum is just sort of sitting there. So I I hope that's not the issue because I've been doing a bit of research and trying to amend uh, calcium rich soils without changing pH, and uh, I haven't really found anything. That's not to say there isn't a method. It's just I haven't found it yet. So I've got my soil sample here, and I'm going to send that off to Michelle, and she can crunch her numbers and look in her telescope thing over there, man, and tell me what's wrong with my soil. Because essentially, you know, seed head is all to do with stress, and I've been attributing it to uh, insufficient soil temperatures. You know, like we've barely been hitting 30, 32 throughout the last two or three years. So. Um, that may be a little bit of a cop out and it might be more to do with my micronutrients. So um, hopefully we'll find out this year and see what the go is. So in terms of the propagation project, until I hear back uh, about what's wrong with my soil profile, I'm not gonna blast that side. So I'm just gonna do this side here and get my zoysia in the ground and see if we can't propagate some kind of thing there. But what I really wanna see is my Tiff Tough perform, man. Like, it's, I've, like I said, I've been attributing it to poor soil temperatures, but Surely 30 degree um, ambient temperature is enough to grow uh, a cooch variety. So um, let's see what that comes back before I go just just knocking it all on the head, eh? <laughs> Radio, let's get out the back from Mo. It's not looking too bad, mate, eh? We give it a quick trim, get rid of those frostbitten tips, and it is none too shabby. So, oh boy, we were breaking the one third rule down here. Do not get me wrong, oh boy. And it was only really scalping where the trench line was, you know, obviously because it was like super tall. But uh, I'm really happy with that as our first mow on the ramp. So we've reduced scalping, so we're reducing stress on the plant as it wakes up. And uh, that'll make it right for our reno in, in hopefully in a couple of weeks time if this uh, nice warm weather keeps up. So what I'm gonna do now is just shift my greenhouse, I'll probably pop that up by the house and then we'll mow the, uh, and then we'll mow the deck. I'm so glad we got that mow in the books, man. 
what that's done is removed all the frost off of the tips of the blade and now we can see a dark green so we'll notice there's a darker green up the top where i had the trampoline but also where i had the uh the makeshift greenhouse so really happy with that mow and the french drains are working a treat man i'm walking through here and not dropping a millimeter um i'm so glad i spent the time at the end of the last growing season and put that in because that now means i'm going to be able to put out my acceleron gr app today like early september i wouldn't wouldn't even be thinking about that going on the last couple of years and uh my um pre-emergent application as well so we're going to get them out today and uh we need to reno this sooner rather than later because there's still some differential settlement between the trench and the existing loam so uh she's a little bit bumpity lumpity bumpity but uh we'll fix that come reno mate right yeah let's get some product out eh the first one we're going to go out with is going to be a celebrant gr and i've got enough in here to do the front and the rear lawn so what I don't want to do is actually combine this with my Oxifert uh, application because they both run a different SGN, which is the prill size. So it could go out uneven if you try to mix them. So uh, we're going to go out like this first and then we'll come back for the Oxifert. So before applying product, I typically like to test my irrigation before I go throwing it out for the first time in the season, but I'm going to roll the dice and it seems like it's working alright. Alright, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If you guys do me a wicked mad favour, take it easy. I'll chat you wrong. Right.